these diseases, they're not gone. And that the only thing that we're keeping them away is really is our immunizations. In Great Britain, there was a large decline in a number of uh, children that were receiving uh, the MMR, and they saw large outbreaks of measles. Children died. They had large outbreaks of pertussis or whooping cough. Children died. So that these vaccines, the, a lot of the things people say, oh, we'll just let them get the diseases because these are just childhood diseases. Every child gets them, they're okay. That's true. That's what happened before we had immunizations. All the children got the diseases and a lot of them died. The success of our vaccine program has actually been one of the problems of the vaccine program. Because it's been so successful and we've eradicated the diseases so well, or at least minimized the disease so well, that many times people are now not seeing the benefits of the vaccine. What they see is the risks. What we see with autism is that children typically start to be noticed for having autism because they're having delayed speech. Speech often is starting at about a year of age. The children receive the MMR typically about a year of age. So what people were seeing is that you're receiving an MMR and at the same time you were seeing children having delayed speech. So very naturally it was that they were trying to say the receipt of the MMR was causing the autism. What actually it looks like it is, is there's a temporal association. In other words, the two things happen at the same time, but it's not one that's causing the other. Thimerosal is a preservative that's been used in vaccines for a number of years. The reason we do, uh, we used to have thimerosal in vaccines is because that way we could have what's called a multi-dose container that you could have a, a vial that would have 10 to 20 doses in one vial and they could ship that to the um, nurse or doctor and they could be able to take uh, multiple doses out of the same vial. One of the issues with uh, vaccination is whether or not we should continue to have thimerosal in vaccines. And the decision was made a number of years ago is that while there was no evidence to show that thimerosal was dangerous, um, it was thought that if you could remove it from vaccines, we should. And it was, it, we found a way that could be removed and so that's why it has been removed from vaccines. If you split apart vaccines, then you potentially would have less antigens that a, children or a child is getting at one time. And the antigen is the component we're putting in the vaccine to try to help our body make a response. Um, if you look at that though, as far as our body having one or two antigens in a shot or three antigens in a shot versus one, it's really a tiny amount compared to what we're exposed to on a daily basis as far as from pollens, from dust, from foods, from just um, exposure to other people, we're exposed to hundreds and thousands of antigens a day. So that the number that we're receiving in a vaccine is actually almost unmeasurable compared to the total number of antigens a day we're receiving. There's absolutely no evidence that his series uh, is uh, any safer and that there certainly is evidence to suggest that it would be more risky, it would be riskier because you're now having a longer time the children are not immunized against the disease. Doctors now are losing money giving vaccines. The storage of vaccines is very expensive. The number of vaccines we're getting is increasing um, and so that it's very costly for practices to store the vaccines. Um, I've talked personally to doctors that have said, I know we're gonna lose money on this vaccine, but it's important for the children, and so we're just gonna do it, and we're just gonna take it as a business loss. Can they change their mind? And the answer is absolutely yes. We have a schedule for catch-up. Um, we typically use the schedule for children that are immigrating to the United States that have not received uh, our immunization schedule but it absolutely could be used um, on children that have lived in the United States their whole life that uh, were behind on vaccines. So the answer is you can always start your immunization schedule. We can catch them up. And with the catch-up schedule, uh, we can catch most children up in two or three months.